Hi and welcome to this video. In this video, I want to have a look at a topic or I want to share my thoughts on a topic, which is JavaScript framework churn. And with that, I mean that uh, that idea or the, the feeling that you have a lot of JavaScript frameworks available. And with that, I mean frameworks for front end web development. And there's a new framework coming out every week. And therefore, at the point of time you learn framework A, you already have to learn a new one. In this video, I'll share my thoughts on that and I'll share why I don't really think that this is what's happening. And I'll also share why I think that it's a good thing that we have more and more alternatives. So what's the problem? The problem is that over the last seven years, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, we had a lot of JavaScript libraries and frameworks come up that help us build modern user interfaces for the browser. So with that, as I just said, I mean frameworks and libraries that help us in uh, on the browser side. So not Node.js frameworks like Express. Of course, we had jQuery. jQuery is really old. Um, then we had tools or frameworks like Angular 1, then React, then Angular 2, then all the other versions of Angular. And then we had Vue and uh, we have Svelte and Inferno.js and Aurelia and Stancil.js and Polymer and, and so many tools. That's at least the feeling many people have. And actually, I don't think that's really appropriate or I don't think, well, the feeling, a feeling is always appropriate, obviously, but I don't think that this is the right way to look at this. It's not a problem that we have all these options. And here's why. Now, first of all, it's important to understand that JavaScript, the language, has come a long way since 2006, 7 and so on. Back when I learned it, which is even longer ago, um, you couldn't do anything reasonable with JavaScript. And nowadays, it's the most important language in front-end uh, web development, maybe in overall web development. And that, of course, is the case because a lot of new features have been added to the language it's now um, more stable across browsers. So all browsers implement the same features and you don't have to implement uh, dozens of fallbacks to make your app work in three different browsers. And that all helps us with building modern JavaScript driven um, user interfaces. Now when jQuery came out, it fixed a lot of problems JavaScript had back then. It made sure that you had one API, so one language, so to say, one syntax you could use, that worked across all browsers by abstracting the different implementations for different browsers away from you. It gave you a convenient and easy way of traversing the DOM tree, of editing that DOM tree, and of uh, adding CSS classes to elements and so on. That's all uh, cool. These were all cool things which uh, jQuery did. Now with uh, more and more of these features added to JavaScript itself, so to the language itself, of course jQuery became a bit redundant. Now, first of all, I still want to say if you are using jQuery and if you're happy with it, if you can achieve your goals, if your website is performant, uh, performant and if your users like your website, there's of course no reason to switch away. Um, so no one's taking jQuery away from you, but it certainly was more important in the past than it is today. Now with the JavaScript language becoming more and more important, new libraries and frameworks came up simply because you could now solve different problems. Back in the day with jQuery, of course, we targeted a h1 tag and changed the text there manually in code when a user pressed a button. And for that, we had to add an event listener to the button and manually manage the value of maybe a counter that we were using in our app and so on. So you had to do a lot of manual wiring up. And um, especially for bigger apps, for more complex user interfaces, that's really hard to do and easy to mess up. That's why solutions like Angular 1 came up or why Angular 1, which was around the, the only uh, important framework back at the time it came out, why that appeared. Because it made building more complex user interfaces easier because it took a lot of that manual DOM node selecting part and updating part away from you and gave you a way of saying what the result should be and that it would go ahead and update the DOM appropriately. Now, React took that to the next level by using uh, even more refined approach um, of giving you a declarative way of building your user interface, which means in React, you 
you build the user interface how it should look like with a couple of dynamic segments in there, so to say, and then you just manage the, the code that updates the, the values in these dynamic segments and React does all the DOM updating and so on behind the scenes for you in a very efficient way. And that's also why Angular 2 and so on came out because that also is a, uh, does it in a way, a way more efficient way than Angular 1 and gives you an even more declarative way of managing your, your front ends uh, or your user interfaces. And it's pretty much the same for Vue.js, another framework. So that's why all these tools came out. And until this point, the story of one tool replacing another tool is of course correct. Angular 1 replaced jQuery, React kind of replaced Angular 1 or at least uh, kind of kicked off that transition from Angular 1 to modern frameworks like React and like Angular 2. And that's basically where we are at now. And we've been at that point for two years now. Angular 2 was released two years ago, a good two years ago. React was released even longer ago. And of course, all these libraries and frameworks themselves update. We have Angular 8 now, and a lot of people still mistake Angular 8 with, oh God, everything's new again. Actually, if these people would start reading the change notes, the change log, or watch my new, what's new videos, you would learn that basically nothing changed since Angular 2. Small improvements, a new feature here and there, but overall, Angular 8 is Angular 2. It's not a different framework. But this video is not about Angular 8. Um, that's just a side note. So we still have Angular. Let's forget the version numbers because it's basically all the same. We have Angular, we have React, we have Vue. And that's been the case for over two years now. And that will very likely be the case in two years and in three years. Because of course, we got a lot of other frameworks and libraries coming up and I'll come back to these in a second. But these big free frameworks are here to stay. They're under active development. They got committed teams. They got a huge fan base and base of developers that are using it. And these are all very strong reasons why these frameworks will stay here. Facebook is backing React and Google is backing Angular and they will continue developing these. And of course, these frameworks will be developed to adapt to new trends or implement new features that are now possible with JavaScript. But the way you generally use these frameworks and libraries will, will not change that drastically. So you will not have to learn a brand new framework in a year from now. You, what you know today will still be highly relevant in a year and in two years. I'm, I'm really convinced by that. Now, of course, we got other tools like Svelte and InfernoJS, Aurelia, Stencil.js, Polymer. What's the idea behind all these tools? Why do they exist if Angular and React and Vue are here to stay? Well, of course, because there are always things you can do better than these existing frameworks and libraries are doing uh, them. Because the existing solutions like Angular might be targeting a broader audience or a broader uh, range of use cases. And a new framework that came up or that comes up might target a, a very specific use case, might, for example, give you a very small bundle size that might be perfect for your next project. So if you're working on your own projects, definitely dive into such solutions and explore if they, these new tools might be better for you. But you don't have to, even if React does one thing worse than a new framework, that does not mean that React does it horrible. That does not mean that an app built with React will be worse than with that new tool, that new framework. It might be equally good. It might be a bit worse, but such a small fracture, there might be such a small difference that you can't even measure it. And measuring performance and so on, by the way, is, is really hard because there are so many use cases and apps and possible users and so on. So that's a totally different chapter. So these new solutions might do some things differently or in a better way, but that does not mean that the existing solutions are doing it in a horrible way. It's good that we have all these alternatives though, because you can learn something new, and I personally love learning new stuff. You can use these solutions for your new side projects, your personal projects, or maybe if you have a company, your small company, you can use these frameworks for your next project in a company. And even if none of that applies to you, and if you hate learning new things, which is not that great if you're a web developer, but that's a different thing. Even if that all is the case, you still benefit from these new tools. Why? Simply because they drive competition. If something new is coming up, if a new framework is coming up, 
and that gains some traction or has some interesting ideas. Not only you will recognize it, but also the developers behind React and Angular and Vue. And if there are some good ideas in that framework that lead to a smaller bundle or better performance, easier, uh, better ease of use and so on, then you can definitely rely on these existing tools picking up these ideas. Of course, because the Google team, the Angular team, wants Angular to be the best framework for every job you can um, use it for. The React team wants React to win and the Vue team wants Vue to win. And therefore, if something new is coming up, which has some cool ideas, these existing frameworks will certainly look at these ideas and see if they can incorporate them. So even if you're not learning new frameworks and libraries, you will probably still benefit from their existence. These are my thoughts and therefore my summary of course is that it's not so bad that we have more alternatives. You don't have to learn them, definitely not. But maybe it's still interesting to learn something new. Maybe it helps you even with React if you learn about a new feature in a different framework because you then start thinking about how that specific use case is handled in React and maybe you did something wrong there or you can write better React code. And even if that's not the case, well, the competition thing still applies. So these are my thoughts on, on this topic. Uh, I'm really interested in hearing yours. So please share your thoughts in the comments. And with that, I hope you liked the video. Bye.